evening, everyone. Welcome to the April 5th meeting of your Board of Commissioners. Uh, thank you for being here. And uh, tonight we will have an invocation by Pastor Lim Hardison. If you will make your way up, Reverend. And we'll all stand. Following that, we'll have our Pledge of Allegiance. And I'll ask Doug Isley if he will to lead that for us tonight. Please stand if able. Father God, we come here at the close of the day when most people are going home. These men have come here to conduct the business of the county. We are thankful for the opportunity that we have to live and to work in Rockingham County. We pray for the leading of your spirit tonight on this meeting, that all that's done and said might be for your honor and glory and to make this a better place to live and to attract other people that will want to come and join us. We give you the thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, Mr. Isley. Well, for those of you who are in the room, you notice the uh, digs look a little bit different tonight. For those of you who are viewing online, you'll see hopefully better quality and you'll see some changes, the least of which is we're in our normal seating arrangement. But there are other things, and I'll ask the county manager if he will briefly just to give an acknowledgement to those who have helped out with this. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So we've had our, our maintenance department. I want to uh, thank the maintenance department for their efforts. They were they built the, the, the area over there. They took care of some of the issues up here and um, modified the room a little bit. But mainly I want to thank uh, Derek Southern, our IT director, and he can introduce his uh, staff persons or his uh, contractees. Uh, come up, Derek. Ronnie Tate, I appreciate your group doing a great job. First, I want to reiterate to the maintenance department. I know you guys know in three weeks it was a huge turnaround for us to do a lot of constructions and turn this room around and insert that projector in the ceiling with a flush mount, which took a lot of work from our maintenance department. And uh, secondly, I want to uh, thank Audio and Light out of Greensboro. They were great to work with, and they made a lot of accommodations for the changes that we had to deal with the construction of this room and making things work, and they were unbelievable fle flexible, and we're here on holiday and um, here today to try to make things work. So I want to thank them with Brett Everhart. Thank you, folks. We appreciate it. And with that, we will get back to uh, our agenda. Mm -hmm. As everyone knows, we operate from an approved agenda. And uh, tonight, we have that here. It's been published. Do we have a motion to accept this agenda? Are there any changes to be made? Mr. Chair, yes, I'd like Mr. to make Pardon? a mo motion to accept the agenda with the following changes that we add under closed session. Uh, uh, add general statute under 143 I mean, point 318.11A5, instruct negotiating instrument. With that change. Very good. Do we have a second with that modification? So move. Uh, that being said, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Thank you. We have an approved agenda. Well, we make use of a consent agenda, and items on the consent agenda are non-controversial items. However, if anyone has questions about the items, please contact Lance Metzler, our county manager. Mr. Metzler will be glad to fill you in on those details. And with that, do we have a uh, motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Very good. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Very good. That takes us to item number six, public comment. We have one person sign up, uh, Bernie Parnell. Please make your way to the podium. And with that, we'll ask uh, the manager, if he will, to go ahead and read those rules, please. Okay. Um, the public comment period shall be for the purpose of allowing the members of the public to present any matter pertaining to county business or items on the Board of Commissioners agenda. This period shall not serve as a forum for debate with the Board of Commissioners. Remarks shall be addressed directly to the Board of Commissioners and not to staff, the audience, or medium. The chairperson will open up the co public comment period. Any speaker who wishes to speak shall approach the podium and not speak from his or her seat. 
Each speaker shall clearly state his or her name and physical address when he or she approaches the podium. Any citizen desiring to, meet, to uh, present on any matter shall be allotted three minutes. Citizens will be allowed to yield their time on a specific topic by utilizing one more attendee's time. This would allow no more than six minutes. I will time the speakers and notify the chairman of their limit. The time clock will start with three minutes unless yielded time to six minutes. You will hear a beep at one minute to alert you to wrap up your comments. If you are to yield your time or your time is yielded to you, then please let the chairman know in advance. Speakers will not be allowed to campaign for public office, promote private business ventures, or use language of a personal nature which insults or demeans any person or which, when directed at a public official, is not related to his or her official duties. The Board of Commissioners may accept written comments in lieu of oral statements. Written statements can be delivered to the County Manager's Office. Bernie. 220 Woodland Drive, Reedsville. And y'all must have thought I was going to say something controversial. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm here to talk about, for just a minute, uh, a new display we have in front of our Justice Center uh, that's called the Charters of Freedom. <clears throat> I know most, most of you guys were there uh, a week and a half or so ago when they uh, did the dedication of this. Um, there are several things I need to mention. One, one is the fact that the lady that, that spearheaded this whole thing, Bonnie, Joiner, who lives in Eden, needs to be complimented immensely. She did a fantastic job. The ceremony that day was awesome even. But Bonnie put, put a lot of time and effort into this thing for the last two years. Uh, and if for anybody that was not there that day, you missed a real treat. The, the, the dedication ceremony was awesome. The one, Charters of Freedom, just so everybody knows, the displays out there are what's called Charters of Freedom. It's the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights, which is now on display in front of our Justice Center. And I hope that somewhere down the road we're going to see a lot of school field trips for third, fourth, fifth graders would be awesome. I also think it would be great for the civics classes at the high schools. Uh, and even beyond that, when you're taking American history in high school, I think it would be a, a fantastic field trip. The one thing that, that bothered me that day, and I was told it was supposed to have been talked about it, but it was not, and that is the pavers that are in front of this display. Anybody, I started saying the county, but anybody anywhere, you don't have to be from Rockingham County, to purchase one of these pavers, but it was not talked about. There are a lot of people there, and there are, are not nearly enough pavers that have been purchased. Part of Rockingham County's responsibility, in my mind, uh, is helping pay, and this is the way the thing works. Our Charters of Freedom was paid for by somebody else. It is our responsibility to pay for the next one somewhere else. We don't know where that'll be, and it really doesn't make any difference. But, but I feel like we're under an obligation to purchase enough pavers that we can pay for the next one wherever they do it. And this is the way the process works. They have a foundation that, pay, that paid for this for us, and I feel like we, and I, I've got some forms here, um, I don't know if the county's got any. Do you have up. some? Yes, I, I, I brought some to give you if you don't. Um, I, I feel like the, the, you guys can help us sell these pavers to pay for what we, what I consider our obligation to pay for the next Charters of Freedom, wherever it is. It could be, any, it could, it could be anywhere in the country, actually. Their goal is to cover all 100 counties in North Carolina eventually and all, I think it's 45 or 46 counties in South Carolina. And there are other places too. Um, I, I, would, I would encourage anybody that's not been out there to go and I would actually encourage a lot of folks to buy these papers. We, we need to do our part 
uh, for what was done for us, and I thank you. Bernie, before you leave, yes. if you could, for the um, folks at home and for the ones in the audience, could you announce how to purchase a paver? There's a form. But where, does it have a number to call? Does it have... Do we have that on any sort of website? It Do we does have a number. Put it on the web, our web page. Yeah. There's a number on this form down here, too. There are um, three levels of pavers. Uh, the four by eight brick costs $100. Then you can get a, I mean, I'm sorry, it's an eight by four. Uh, and then it goes to an eight by eight solid brick that's $250, and then you can get an 8x8 granite brick for $350. And I can tell you that these guys do a really, really thorough job putting what you want on these pavers. The one that I did, I've got, <laughs> I, I, when I submitted it, I didn't think they were going to be able to put it all on there. But what I did was put the Parnell family at the top, and then I put mine and Diane's name. Then I, I listed, I got three kids. Um, I put all three kids' names and their, my grandkids, their kids on the paver. There is 13 or 14 names on the paver. So you can put one name, you can put, you can put a bunch of names on there if you want to, to honor anybody you want to or to remember anybody that you want to. I think it is as worthwhile an endeavor that we've had to, a chance to participate in that we've had in a long time. And, and it, again, if you hadn't seen this thing, you need to, it's the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. Guys, this is what we are. This is why we are. So I thank you. It's very important. Thank you for being here tonight to bring that to everyone's attention. We appreciate it. That is the only person signed up for public comment tonight. So with that, we'll go to item number seven, our proclamation. Uh, Jeremy Delap with NCDOT. Would you come forward? Thank you guys for being here tonight and introduce your cohorts as well. This is uh, Wright Archer. He's the Division 7 Division Engineer. And Jason Jordan behind me, he's the resident district engineer in Rockingham County in Casper. So, I did, right, did you want to well, start? Well, I would if, if, you, if you'd allow me. I would like to thank you for having us tonight sure. um, to help uh, kick off the proclamation from uh, April 10th to, to the 24th uh, and give you a little bit of information about our litter, our litter program and just the, the problem that we're seeing throughout the state. Um, I've got some kind of some quick facts and figures real quick in, in Division 7. We picked up about 84,000 pounds of, of litter this year from January to, to, uh, to date. And in Rockingham County, about 14,000 pounds of litter has been picked up. Um, from uh, statewide, we're looking at about 3.1 million pounds of litter from January to, to April has been picked up. And um, from July of 2020 to now, we've picked up about 6.1 million pounds of litter. Uh, we didn't really start our litter program until about September because of our, our budget. Um, we're in a lot better shape now, obviously, than we were this time last year. But uh, that's, it's, a, it's a systemic problem that we're seeing across across the state, not just in this area. We've uh, we've spent over $7.5 million thus far in, uh, in litter pickup. You know, that's a lot of potholes. That's a lot of resurfacing. That's, that's a couple, couple, three bridge projects. So... So what, you're, what you're telling me is that's a lot of money that we've used for pickup that could have gone to improving the roads. Absolutely, yes, okay. sir. And, and you know, a lot of things, our, our snow and ice and things like that, we really can't control. But to me, litter is something that, that we can control, um, or at least a part of that. So, uh, but we, we, are, we are glad to be up here that, that you, you do have your uh, spring sweep, sweep coming up. We certainly want to participate. I'd like to volunteer to come up and help. Uh, and I can speak for Mike Fox, our uh, chairman of the Board of Transportation. Uh, he would like to come up and, and, and spend a half a day uh, picking up uh, litter. We were down in Guilford County a couple weeks ago. Uh, he's very involved in that, so we would like to certainly participate participate in that uh, as best we can. Um, you know, we've got Luke Combs. He's given us some public service announcements uh, that I think Jason Julian has has provided or can provide you guys, and uh, that just shows the the support that we're having, and we certainly <coughs> want to support Rockingham County. 
So, um, and I know we do have a, a, a litter, a SWAT the litter bug app. I think Jason's going to talk, talk a little bit about. Thank you, Mr. Archer. Thank you, commissioners. So the, the state has come out with a SWAT a litter bug app. And you actually just put it on your phone, on your, your laptop, or your iPad, or whatnot. And what you do is, you actually, you don't go to the app store to get it. You actually have to go to ncdot.gov slash litter. And I can forward this to the county manager, Mr. Metzler, and get him to please, send that to whoever do. needs it. Put it on a, a minutes or whatnot. But um, once you go on there, um, I kind of just went today and did a screenshot, downloaded it myself, and did a test run with it to see what would happen. And what it does is, when it first pops up, the first thing that comes up is there, there's a message that says, do not file reports while driving. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> Commissioner Reese, part of us, you don't text and drive, we don't want that. So that's the first app that comes up, and then it says continue. And then you come in, and get my glasses on here. It asks for the date the time, the plate number, so the license tag number, the county you're in, the city, if there isn't, if you're in the city, and the street name, road name, and then the violation. So it could be as small as flicking a cigarette butt out. So that's one of the things you can put on there, or trash blowing out of a trash truck, whatever. Uh, you don't put your name. It doesn't link you up with anything. It just it gets sent to the litter campaign. And they actually, this is what happens. So everybody's kind of waiting. What's going to happen? The, um, the person that's tied with that license tag will get sent a message, an informal message, notifying them from the highway patrol, notifying them of, a lit of the littering offense, the penalties for littering, and a note urging them to help keep North Carolina clean. So they're not going to get a ticket. Uh, they're not going to say that Jason Julian sent them a, a message in on them, um, but it, it will send them a, a warning, let them know that you, know, you were caught littering. So it's um, it's the honor system, I guess. But they'll get a they'll get a message and just kind of I guess hopefully it'll work on their conscience a little bit and won't do it again. So, um, but that's that's the SWAT a litter bug app. And uh, you can only get to it through ncdot.gov forward slash litter. And um, first time users, it'll, it'll give you some information to, to download it on your, your iPhone or your phone. And any questions? Or I'll turn it back over to Jeremy. Uh, just need to go through the proclamation. Is that? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead and do that. I think some of the commissioners do have questions. Go ahead and do that first. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, the Department of Transportation organizes two annual statewide litter sweep events to work toward the goal and clean of beautiful roads. Additionally, the focus of these campaigns is to motivate groups and individuals to clean litter from along the roadsides and to discourage the practice of littering, resulting in a cleaner Rockingham County, therefore cleaner North Carolina. The natural beauty of the county and state, as well as clean environment or sources of provide to pride for all citizens, attracting tourists, and aiding in recruiting new industries. And the cleanup will improve the aesthetics of Rockingham County, increase awareness of the need for cleaner roadsides, and emphasize the importance of not littering. And the cleanup scheduled for April 10th through April 24th will unite and adopt the highway volunteers, Department of Corrections, inmates, community service workers, and North Carolina Department of Transportation employees. NCD2 also encourages local governments and communities, civic and professional organizations, businesses, churches, schools, families, and individual citizens to participate by furnishing cleanup materials and disposal. And whereas the North Carolina Department of Transportation will provide pickup of collected trash, tires, and other abandoned items and transport them to the Rockingham County landfill. NC, NCDOT shall be exempt from landfill tipping charges for disposal of such items from April 12th to April 26th. Sounds good. Thank you, Mr. Diglap. We appreciate it. Commissioner Pirtle, do you have any questions? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just want to say thank you, uh, you guys and, and the DOT for stepping up and, and uh, participating in a program like this. I share with you that this, this body has had more than one conversation about ways to uh, combat this problem in our community. And I know it's just not a problem in Rockingham County. It's a problem statewide, as by the, the numbers that you shared with us. 
However, I just share with you too that uh, there's been discussions at this point in time that to, to address the uh, the prosecution and the uh, and 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 holding folks civilly accountable for 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 littering. I know that recently our public information officer coordinated a public service announcement to include all of the law enforcement heads across the county uh, to address this this issue. Uh, I myself have zero tolerance, zero compassion for anybody that throws uh, garbage out the window and litters our community. I picked it up and uh, it's just it's such a simple fix and it's very frustrating to see when that when it happens. Uh, but anyway, I thank you. I thank the, the Department of Transportation and for y'all representing them tonight. Appreciate what you do in our community. Uh, every time that I've had the opportunity to call on Jason, he's always been very responsive to whatever cause. He's, he, he knows I, I, we really appreciate the relationship that exists between county government and the Department of Transportation. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Commissioners, anyone else? Gentlemen, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Wright, for making the trip up here tonight. Thank you guys for being here. We, need to move on we, do, we do need a, a motion on that proclamation. I'll be happy to make a motion to, uh, to, to, uh, in, in, uh, in support of the resolution or the, that has been submitted. Yes. Is there a second on the proclamation? A proclamation. I'd be pleased to second it. Very good. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Very good. Thank you, gentlemen, again. Appreciate you being here. Next item on our agenda is number eight, a public hearing. Uh, Mr. Lester, will you present that for us tonight? Yes, sir. Thank you, Chairman, Board of Commissioners. This public hearing is for consideration of the application for funding for building reuse improvements to serve Nestle Purina. Uh, you may remember we've actually done this public hearing. Uh, this was done several months ago, but due to the process of going through the environmental approvals, it became obvious to the business to be served that a lot of the demolition activities that was proposed in that uh, needed to move faster than the final environmental and release of funds. So the project you had before you a few months ago was submitted for $1 million for building reuse, which is build an upfit, and $1 million for demolition. Uh, after staff and others talking to the state, the North Carolina Department of Commerce, I think everybody's on board with us making the application revision and submitting it to be $2 million, all for building reuse for the building upfit, zero for demolition. This public hearing is required, like the first one, prior to submitting that revised application to the North Carolina Department of Commerce for consideration to gather any citizen comments, and I'll be glad to answer any questions. Well, um, so what I heard is not, not additional money, just reclassification. Yes, sir. With that, we'll open the public hearing tonight. We'll consider public hearing open for this matter, and let's see who signed up. We have no one signed up to speak. So that's going to be pretty quick. For that, we'll close the public hearing. And gentlemen, any questions? With that, we'll ask for a motion. I make a motion for approval. Is there a second? Second. All, any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Very good. The motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Lester. With that, that brings us to item number nine. We have with us Ms. Casey Vincent the Executive Director of the United Way of Rockingham County. Ms. Vincent. I'm not kissing my no more. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioners, for pursuing the grant with the State um, Department of Commerce. I'm going to speak about the COVID-19 grant program and policies, the uh, application, vetting, due diligence, approval, denial, distribution and funds, and recoupment of funds. Uh, applications will be taken by the United Way of Rockingham County. <clears throat> the application was created in conjunction with the Rockingham County Department of Health and Human Services, Ms. Felissa Farrell, uh, in accordance with existing Rockingham County social service programs. 
All efforts are made to ensure that the program requirements met both North Carolina and Rockingham County social service program standards. Applications will obtain information from the applicant related to the need for which the assistance is being sought, documentation of direct impact COVID has had on their income, documentation verifying existence of need, identification of the applicant, and documentation verification the applicant is indeed the debtor who owes the debt. For vetting and due diligence, applications will be uh, verified by the United Way of Rockingham County in conjunction with Rockingham County Department of Health and Human Services. Verification of information contained within the application, documentation verification, and verification from the entity of the amount delinquent. Um, any application failing to meet any administration requirements will be deemed denied and applicant will be contacted. An important point to make is that the applicant has to provide the documentation that their income was affected by COVID-19. Whether there was a complete plant shutdown, whether hours were cut, or they had to quarantine due to an exposure, they have to provide that type of documentation. Vetting due diligence will ensure all required information and documentation are present, such as identity of applicant matches the debtor on the utility bill, verifying COVID-19 in fact impacted their income, causing the indebtedness and the inability to pay, and then income documentation such as pay stubs, previous year's tax returns, or bank statements. For the approval or denial, after vetting and due diligence, any application files uh, recommended for approval will be forwarded to Rockingham County Department of Health and Human Services with a secondary review form. This form will be used by their personnel to ensure the application is completed per requirements and that all necessary documentation is indeed included in the file. Applicants approved will be signed off on by the Rockingham County Department of Health and Human Services representing Rockingham County government. All application files will then be returned to the United Way of Rockingham County for further processing. Denied applicants will be contacted. Approved applications will be compiled on a weekly basis for disbursement from funds by the United Way of Rockingham County. A report will be generated and forwarded to the Rockingham County Department of Finance for disbursement. The report will contain all required information for payment and tracking purposes. Required information such as the applicant's name, the entity entitled to payment, amount, account number, date of UWRC approval, and date of Rockingham County Department of Health and Human Services approval. Uh, Rockingham County Department of Finance will send out payments on a weekly basis generated by the uh, application's approval report. For recoupment, in the event it is determined duplication of benefits, ineligible benefit, or otherwise fraudulently obtained benefit, Rockingham County government will seek to recoup those funds. Uh, it's important to remember there is a $1,000 cap on these applications, so they can seek other assistance. It's duplication only if they receive or are awarded more than the amount that they are owed. So for example, if they are behind $2,500 in their Duke Power Bill and they apply for assistance with us for $1,000 and they apply for $1,500 with another organization, that is not duplication of benefits. So with our $1,000 cap, we feel like we're going to be pretty secure with that. Um, Rockingham County's duplication benefits of policy will be followed with regards to any legal recoupment. The North Carolina De State, uh, State Department of Commerce has stated that it is not necessarily first paid is safe, second paid is the one that has to recoup. There are multiple factors involved, including the dates on the application, dates of processing by the grantee, dates of processing by the entity receiving payment. Every effort will be made to ensure no duplication of benefits, but unlike other programs currently running through the Department of Health and Human Services, there is no database um, that we can run any kind of check against to see if they've been awarded money anywhere else. Um, I have participated in a meeting with the North Carolina Department of Commerce, and I did want to let you know Rockingham County is well ahead of the game where the, all of this is concerned. There are some counties and municipalities that are still in process of gathering the paperwork that we turned in back on March 17th. 
So I, I feel that Rockingham County is in a good place to move forward with this grant. Any questions? Any questions? Mr. Chair, I know there was some concern about uh, our staff being involved with the process, yes. but after uh, speaking with Ms. Galloway about the check, um, uh, distribution of the checks, we thought it was a lot easier for us just to run it through us since it's such a small amount, it'd be a, a lot quicker and it'll be less expensive for United Way as well. Question. Yes, sir. Uh, what, what level of approval uh, is going to be required to sign these that are in the county? It'll go through United Way. They'll check it first. They'll send it to Felissa's department. <clears throat> Felissa will check off on it once they check off on it. So it's got to have your signature? It's a quality assurance review. Yeah. It's pretty solid. To, to address, further address that, Felissa, you've looked at this and your department can handle it. We're okay? Uh, yes. Ms. Vincent and I have worked together on this. Um, when we first kind of talked about applying for the grant and trying to figure out a process for all of that, we got together very early on and talked it through. We also looked at kind of how we wanted to do it. Um, initially, we thought about letting her come to the department and take those applications, but then we kind of thought otherwise of that. So we looked at sort of the way that processes are done in social services programs, and we, we kind of made it that way so it's simpler for the folks that are making the application, so we kind of kept the same process. Well, uh, additionally, I want to be sure that it's not a burden on your department. That's the other concern that we have is we, we don't want it to be uh, burdensome, so, overly burdensome. You know, the way that uh, we look at this is this is going to be a benefit to our community. And our community has been hit by COVID-19. There's a lot of folks out there in need. We'll figure it out. We always do. Worst comes to worst. Lance can write me an email about yes. it over time. <laughs> Commissioner Pirtle, you have got a question? Yeah, thank you. Uh, and this is probably for mm -hmm. Felissa. Uh, if, if it is determined there's some fraudulent activity, uh, who's going to be responsible for investigating that, or what, where is that going to fall? So that's been a question that we've been talking about um, through this process. And I think there's some other information that we're waiting on from the state. Is that correct, Lance? Yes, we're still waiting for a meeting with them. So, you know, we re recognize that social programs do have an element of fraud in it. And what we've done is we've built a quality assurance tool around what she has to have in the application. So when we first started working on the application, there were key things that needed to be in it. And so when you put those key things in it and then she requests paperwork to say, okay, is this really the person's income? Did this really happen when they said? There's, it's all built around the application. And then when the quality assurance form, we developed that quality assurance form based on the application. The application. And then a second person is going to look at that and make sure that that is So if I've signed off on the form and sent it to her and it's I've said the income verification piece that they lost dollars due to COVID is in the file, the only way she's going to approve it is if that documentation is in the file. It's not 100 percent. Nothing is. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, our question for the manager. Do, do we need, since we're doing MOU, do we need a motion from the board to accept this MOU? I would, you, well, you've already accepted it the first time, and we had made some mod uh, modifications to our sending that to you guys a while back to take a look at because we had to have it turned in by the 17th. But I would ask that you agree to, to approve the MOU and the vetting process. That, that was a concern before. We just authorize him to enter then. What else? Uh, Bill, well, yes, Mr. Lester. Approving this process, that, that is the most important thing. I think that's where the questions have been. Um, before I get to this next part, let me say that you are probably ahead of everyone. Maybe uh, there's one other client I know uh, I have that is probably maybe a week behind you, but working with everybody we've worked with, uh, the two people you just heard from are, are, are very on top of it. Uh, I think this program is probably tighter than the others we're seeing. So I, I would. I'd like to say that because I think things are, are, are going to run real well. Uh, things will go well. I think one more key after uh, you've dispersed the funds, when we help you get them reimbursed from North Carolina Department of Commerce, we'll look through just a, a quick check to see that all the boxes are checked. So I think it's going to be as good as you can under the circumstances. Like they said, nothing's perfect, but it's, it's pretty tight. Hang on one second. Commissioner uh, Travis? No, no, 
I was just going to say I, I appreciate Miss Vincent and Felicia and Bill and and I definitely our staff. We we know we got some of the best staff in the state. So uh, it's good to hear that uh, the county's way ahead of a lot of people. And and that's always the case for us. We're always waiting on the state to do something. So, but thank you for your hard work. And with that, I, I'll make a motion to approve it. If you want to do it. The, the the one thing I think we're just a bit past the MOU. But tonight, I think in the packet is a, a collection of, of different administrative guidelines and policies. Almost all of them you have adopted for the community development block grant program for building reuse we were talking about earlier. Uh, some of the other economic development projects we're doing like at Ontech. So they're just maybe a little reworded to, to be specifically for this project. The additional things are the things you just heard about. So that, that entire list, we could go through any of them you have questions on, but I think that is in the packet. Am I right, Lance? Yes. Uh, so if you have any of those, those are the things that the anti-displacement and relocation plan, code of conduct, citizen participation plan, equal employment and procurement plan, language access plan, procurement policy, section three plan, section 504 compliance, the project budget ordinance that will allow the money to flow through finance, and then the last two are the CDBG COVID policy and process guidelines and duplication of benefits policy you just heard about. So just to be sure that you would know that if, just if you've got any concise. questions on those, but that's what we would be looking to get approved. Once approved, this will be submitted to the North Carolina Department of Commerce. Right, and quick. at that point, we should be able to get release of funds, but right. Commerce is busy. We'll just have to wait on that process, but they, ha they will have everything they need and then we'll be waiting on uh, that meeting that Lance has mentioned that we've been. Let me, let me ask you this, this then. What you're looking from us tonight is approval on the policies and the process guidelines included in the packet tonight. Yes, sir. Is that what I understand? Yes, sir. Is that your motion? That's Commissioner my motion Travis? to approve. I also include the MOU with that, too. You policy and pr uh, pro vetting process. You have that, Ms. Clerk? Do we have a second? Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Nothing heard. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Very good. Thank you, folks, for being here. I know you've put a lot of work into this, so thank you very much for your due diligence. Thank you. Still waiting on that United Way fund drive, though. <laughs> We're going to get Reese to kiss the pig this time. Okay, I can work on that. I got $100 on it right now if you do it. All right, moving ahead. Item number 10, Ronnie Tate, Director of Engineering. Mr. Tate. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, I've got one item for your consideration tonight, and I uh, went ahead and did just a... A uh, short PowerPoint to uh, take advantage of our new technology, and um, it's a request for approval of funding for design and permitting upgrades to the US 220 uh, sewer system. And you see from this slide, there's uh, four locations that we're looking at to uh, proceed with design and permitting for uh, to upgrade our system and to allow us to uh, reach the capacity that we've had an agreement with the towns of Madison and Mayadan for, uh, for that upgraded capacity. And you can see the, the cost there for the design and permitting estimates. The total uh, design project cost is 536,000 with the funding coming from the uh, Office of State Budget Management. And I'll be glad to take any questions you have. And if you got any more specific one, Bill is still out in the audience for those too as well. So. Questions? If there are no questions, do we have a motion to accept this approval, uh, approval this funding design and permitting upgrades to US 220? Gentlemen? We do have a motion. Is there a second? A second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank, Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Tate. Appreciate it. With that, we have new business. 
Mr. Manager, any new business? Uh, just one thing, Mr. Chair, you wanted me to, to mention that tentatively uh, April 19th will be our, um, our launch date for our new web, website. It will be, uh, I think, www.rockinghamcountync.gov. Is that correct? So April 19th is the date that we're planning on rolling that out. Is our email address going to change? Excuse me? So gonna, we're going to keep our email address. There's so no, not going to be change, any change to that. I wish it would, because it's a long one. God. Or should we get another twofold answer? Uh, originally, yes, we will keep the current email addresses, but we will be rolling to the shorter, simple one uh, at a project at a later date. Cool. Uh, but the current web address and everything will forward to the new domain name. Uh, as far as public concern, uh, they can get to it from a multitude of different domain names. So there will be ultimately no change for access to the website other than new branding. Awesome. Very good. Thank you. I appreciate that. With that, that takes us to Commissioner Comments. Commissioner Travis? I have no comment. Commissioner Pirtle? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll be very brief. Uh, uh, first, I'd like to, uh, uh, to also acknowledge the Charters of Freedom. I know Bernie Parnell does an excellent job, and he is uh, very passionate about it, as you can tell. But uh, uh, it is. I had the opportunity to be there, and it is a... Uh, it's a it's a huge asset for our community and for our county, and I think it is important that we pay it forward, that we buy those pavers, so that the the next community uh, charters of freedom can go to another location in our in our uh, state. And so, enable to enable that, we have to support the one we have. And so, uh, I think Lance is going to make those available on the website, so some folks out in the audience or at home can download, uh, send a check in, and. And also on there is a direction on how to name your paver. And also uh, one of the things I was thinking about here is there's a lot of folks in our community that are uh, just doesn't have the, the ability to get out and, and, and visit those uh, amazing documents there in front of the courthouse. And I wonder if there's something maybe we can do. We've got an, a government channel that I am not going to use the word star for information. That come back to bite me last time I said that, but that we're looking to put information on, and I just can't help but think that maybe between our public information officer, Ms. Mabel, and Roy back there, we can do some type of program where we highlight what we have in our community and, and give those <laughs> that do not have an opportunity to visit because of physical limitations that they can uh, uh, see what's, what's, what's come to our community. And... Uh, so with that, Mr. Mr. Chairman, that's all I have. Very good. Thank you, Commissioner Pirtle. Commissioner Richardson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I want to take a moment to express appreciation to Commissioner Pirtle and previous Commissioner Keith Duncan for their efforts on behalf of the opioid and the uh, foster children and mental health programs. Uh, most of you are unaware of how much time is involved in these things and uh, their support of local efforts and their support of uh, our local LME MCO Cardinal Innovations has been instrumental in what progress, and we still need a lot of progress, right, Mr. Pearl, uh, that we have been able to make, but uh, I think these gentlemen deserve some recognition along with uh, Cardinal for making efforts to improve the quality of life for our citizens. Um, I want to appreciate citizens in general that are making an effort to clean up litter on their own. Uh, Mrs. Parnell and I were talking about a gentleman here locally that I caught in the midst of cleaning up trash just because his bicycle ride took him past it. Um, and I think that's the sort of civic mindedness that we need to help uh, resolve this problem. Notwithstanding, it shouldn't get there to begin with, but if it's there, uh, it's nice to see it go. You know, I, too, want to thank uh, Mr. Parnell uh, for his comments on behalf of America. Uh, patriotism is what keeps us healthy and our government sustained, and uh, it takes the effort to be reminded on occasion, and that's most helpful for, for what you're doing there. Uh, I want to take one moment to encourage every citizen in the county, and even if you're not in the county, to go get your COVID 
19 shot of whatever flavor you choose to do it. You can do it through our health departments. You can do it through Cone Hospital. You can do it at Walgreen. All it's going to cost you is the time it takes to get there. But uh, you're letting your fellow citizens down. I know that there's some, there's some folks that consider this a political statement, but the truth of the matter is it's good science. It's the same sort of science that removes small power pox from the earth and uh, makes us safe from rabies. So I encourage all of our citizens, Rockingham County citizens in particular, to go get your COVID shots. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Berger? Well, I want to thank um, uh, Wright Archer, uh, our District 7 engineer, uh, for coming tonight, as, as well as Jason Julian and Jeremy uh, DeLapp uh, for uh, I guess letting everyone know the public service announcements uh, about the problems that we do have and thank you for your efforts in trying to clean, uh, clean up the state. Uh, also, um, certainly want to thank Bernie Parnell, but uh, Mr. Parnell's words would, would not have been mentioned tonight without the efforts of Bonnie Joyner. And special thanks to Bonnie Joyner for all the time and effort that she put in to, to bring the Charters of Freedom here. So thank you. Very good. Thank you, Commissioner Berger. Well, appreciate those who, who were who took the time to come out tonight. We see Dr. Worrell from our school system and Doug Isley from our school board. We got members of our board of elections here tonight: Bonnie Ferguson and Tony Reese. Thank you guys for being here as well. Um, and again, I'd like to thank um, Andrew Miller and Roy Sawyer's. Uh, guys are back in a different location tonight. They're in the back. Everything go okay tonight? Very good. Thank you, Derek. We appreciate that. Thank you, Ronnie. This is a vast upgrade for us as well as for you guys in the public. We've got screens that we can actually read now so we can understand the words on things. So um, we appreciate that. Uh, we're going to go into closed session in just a few moments. Um, when we come back out, we will not adjourn, but we will go into recess. There's a work session uh, April 19th at 5.30. So just before you guys get gone and, and shut down, I want to be sure to let you know that that's what will be happening when we come back from closed session. So with that, we are looking to go into closed session tonight for, and I don't see my list. Here's the one that was added. Chairman, I think uh, in pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11 approved minutes, A6, discuss personnel, and A5, instruct negotiating instruments. I'll make that in the form of a motion. Thank you. Is there a second? There is. Very good, folks. We are going into closed session now. I don't know that there will be any news afterwards, but no promises. All in favor. All in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? Very good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Burke. Hey.